what this is called is an exostosis. That's the fancy name for it. Um, if they happen, if this, it's just bone, it's just dense bone. If it happens on the inside, it's called a tori. Um, same thing, different name, very low risk stuff. We're just gonna smooth that little lump of bone down. Um, so to do that, I just gently push the gum tissues off to the side. So let's start by making sure that it's good and numb, okay? So I'm gonna top you up with a little more local. You should not feel this, okay? But I'm just gonna give you some more knowing that you can feel that, okay? So we definitely needed to add a little bit more local anesthetic. You okay? Mm -hmm. Should be lightening up, that's for sure. Is it lightening up? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's do one more thing before I give you more local. I'm gonna just touch on the top here to see if this gum's on the top or numb. Can you feel that at all? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna give you a little bit more numbing medicine in this area too. So this stings a little bit here. One, two, three, pinch. Okay, so a pinch there and then a burn. Okay. All right. Now, all that, the local is, does obviously get you numb, but it's also gonna make the procedure a little bit easier too. Um, we like fancy words, call it hydrodissection. By putting the local in there, the fluid just helps push the tissue back also and makes it numb. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now let's get that periosteal again. Right, where I can't see it, hiding in plain view. I'm just gonna touch the area again. We gotta make sure you're good and numb before we do anything. Now when I do this, all you should feel is pressure. Is that true? Try that really front part. Front part again, kind of up here. I feel that. You feel that a little bit? Okay, let me have a little more local too. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, just gently pull this back, and then I need to get the gum tissue back a little bit here just so I can see. So I am gonna go ahead and do this. So a little pressure here. Okay. And it's mostly along the necks of the teeth that we can kind of elevate, move things back, and then stitch things back up again. Now you should be good here, right? Nothing mm -hmm. sore? Mm -hmm. Is it just the thought of it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice deep breath, okay? You're doing great. So just a little pressure. I'll just walk you through this. Okay. Okay. Now, a little pressure as I start gently pushing this gum tissue back just so I can see the air. So a little pressure here. Nice deep breath. You're holding your breath on me right now. <sighs> what happens when you hold your breath is that you get short of breath, your body does, short of oxygen, and you can start to feel panicky. And I can tell you're holding your breath. And so the more you can just say, okay. <sighs> nice deep breath, that will help a lot for you to feel better. And of course, if a person is short of breath, they're gonna feel more anxious than if they're not, right? So it kind of gets the ball going the right direction if you take nice deep breaths so that you're not like amplifying the stress on yourself. Now, just a little pressure here. Now, I have this nicely visualized. I can see exactly the area that we're working on. So, what I'm gonna do now is get my little um, drill over here and just smooth that down, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, we still friends? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, you're not convincing me. <laughs> <laughs> you're done the hard stuff. You've got the local on board. Um, I've already got the tissue back. Now this is a little weird, right? With just the vibrations as we smooth this down. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna walk you through this. Okay. So my instrument here is called the Minnesota. Um, just kind of holds everything back, good. And then we're gonna irrigate with some um, sterile saline, some cool water as well, just to keep things lubricated and um, cool. Okay. So some vibrations here. You okay there? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Lots of vibrations here as we just start to smooth this down. Doing very well. A little more water. Okay. Yeah, a little bit more right on the edge of the burr there. We're doing good. I'd say we got about a third of it gone there. Yeah, just squirt it right on that burr. Perfect. Right on the working end. Very nice. Okay. 
Kurmalar. Kurmalar. Okay, let's go ahead and give you a chance to reload some of the bone. If you're doing dental implants, this stuff is beautiful. It's always people that don't need bone grafting that have like awesome bone right there. We're doing very well. We've got, a, you know, most of this gone. Kind of debulking it to start off with. And then there's, then I'll go ahead and feather things out and make sure things are smooth like back here. Okay, go ahead and put your section down there a little deeper. There we go. Put the section right down there. Okay, good. Go over here. So I slowed down the RPMs a little bit on the actual handpiece, which means you feel the vibrations more. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. Every now and then she touches my um, handpiece with the suction, which is unavoidable, but it kind of makes that clicking noise when she does. And it's just um, part of the keeping things really dry so I can see while she lubricates it and squirts it. Keep it dry so I can see, but squirt water on it. You know, I like to make a challenge for it. <laughs> okay, now, there's a little edge lower that I'm gonna switch this up. Okay, so just a little edge right there. So let's just go ahead and smooth that down. Okay, now, what I always like to do is palpate and just run a finger over there make sure things are smooth. Very nice. Now, let's do this. I'm just gonna flip this because of back where it needs to be and just settle it down. Just kind of feel what that's like. Okay, good. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna irrigate it out. We're basically done all the smoothing and everything, okay? Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna give it a big rinse. Lots of sterile salt water here just to flush. Make sure things are super clean in there. Excellent. And then we're gonna put some dissolvable stitches in, okay? Mm -hmm. Great job. How you feeling so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, you okay? These stitches come out on their own in three to five days, okay? A little suction in there if you could. I'm gonna give you this. Ooh, fancy. Sensor out there is going off. There we go. Okay. In this case, you can see that I went over top of the tooth in the interproximal contact, which really helps hold that propeller right where it needs to be. Okay. And then we're gonna do this right here. Now, there's extra tissue, as you can imagine, right? Because there was that little balloon of bone that's in there and that's mm -hmm. now gone. Um, that extra tissue will tighten up. We don't try to cut anything away because we want the normal, it's called keratinized tissue, the stuff that's right next to teeth to stay next to teeth. If I was to cut stuff away, then I would have to remove the keratinized tissue and then you would have unkeratinized tissue next to teeth, which is just not a long-term good situation for your teeth so that's why we just leave it alone we pack it with gauze and then the body just remodels and that, that tissue just all tightens up in the end depending on like how big that those bumps can get on the inside and the tongue area those things sometimes can get so big that when they come off if they have to come off on the inside um, you can have this a lot of extra tissue there and people wonder about that sometimes so I just like to just reassure people let them know hey not to worry about that Okay, you're starting to feel something there, aren't you? Did you feel that a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the last thing I need to do in that area, so I'm just gonna stay away from it. Put, put this in, 
Because if I was to give you a shot right now, it's going to sting more mm -hmm. than me just finishing up. So I'll just stay away from that area. I knew you'd agree. <laughs> You're like, stay away, from the, stay away from me with your needles. I have one more towards the back where I know it's good enough. Because you didn't feel anything way back here. Right there. Okay. Take a nice deep breath. You're holding your breath again. Good job. Okay, go ahead and take that coat. Don't want to stitch a whisker in either. <laughs> or pull a whisker. Either one's okay. Okay. Let's get this fella trimmed up. Okay, good. Now we're gonna do that ultra long lasting local. I'm gonna pack it with gauze and you are done. Yay. Okay. Now, I go like this. This is just gauze. We're all done now, okay? So I'm just gonna go like this, and I think just for the camera, I'll go ahead and just kind of put my finger in and just kind of hold down the tissue. You can see that it's a little puffy because of the procedure and the local I just gave, but that bump is gone and it's all just baby soft and smooth in there. And that's it. So we'll take a piece of gauze, we'll pack this in here like this. Let's get this out. Okay, you can just go ahead and bite down. You are done. All right, um, I will call you later this afternoon to see how you're doing. You have some medicines to take. Uh, Coop's gonna give you some instructions, but you did it, that's it. Well, thank you so much. All right, Appreciate it. awesome, well done. Thank you. Um, so we it's just good. got rid of this uh, lump of bone called an exostosis. Um, these exostosis, or sometimes called tori, depending on their anatomical position, um, are, are dense cortical bone, and they are variants of normal. They're not pathology. Um, you'll notice that we didn't biopsy. We didn't send anything off um, to the pathologist um, because we don't need to. We know what it is. It's just dense bone. Um, uh, the, you know, with the actual drilling procedure, you can see that fine white sort of dust that's just bone um, that's getting removed, um, made it sure it's nice and smooth, and stitched it close. Um, he should heal very well. Um, he'll do soft, cool foods today, soft, warm foods tomorrow, um, and ramp up, um, you know, based on comfort from there. I'll see him back in a week to make sure he's doing well. The ultra long lasting local called Expro that we gave um, will last two to three days and reduce pain and swelling and tenderness by 70 to 75%. So instead of a peak in terms of pain, swelling, and tenderness, it's more of just a little bump, totally mellows it out. Um, and here uh, we like to use it routinely for the things that we do. So um, if you have any questions about that or anything that you saw today, please let us know, comment down below, uh, hit the subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the flip side. 70% overall drop in opioid use. And with the proper understanding and use of Expiral, you too can see the success that Expiral will bring to your clinic. Dr. McClelland, DDS, has been using it in his clinic for a few years now, and he's seen great success in his patients and their pain management every day. In this six video series, you get a professional master class that will give you the jump start you need to include Expiral in your daily routine. It includes a bonus PDF with a patient information handout post-op medical instructions, and a quick look sheet for the materials and supplies for explaining Expiral. Go to teachable.com today and get educated on a non-opioid anesthetic that will help your patients have a better day.